I need another one of them blue pills. <laughs> she said, I can't give you no more blue pills. One thing that I'm going to move out. I'm going to move out. Good. I ain't no hell nothing like that. I ain't amazing. Are you comfortable? Yeah. So they cut you like right here. Okay, great. So they're not going to see any. Oh, cool. So I can see Exactly. Like you do whatever you want. That one will see you wide, but we hardly ever use it. So awesome. they'll cut you like. Okay. Because I don't look good from here down. <laughs> yes, you do. I look like I have two kids and no, I'm 53. You don't. <laughs> I totally do. You look great. I look great, but I look like I have two kids and I'm 53. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't, I'm not agreeing with that. I'm not agreeing with that. You look I, like you have two little kids. Oh, I And yeah. that you might be 44, 45. Well, I'm not going to say how old you were, but I tell you what, my chin hit my chest when I read it. I went, <laughs> there ain't no way. Yeah. I thought you were like 34. Oh, no, 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 no. Born in the 1900s and 70s. In the 70s. In not the 70, 70, because I'm 70. Now, I'm 79. Okay. Yeah. You could have been my babysitter. I could have. I would have called you play mama. Well, I totally. <laughs> You know what I play mama? Play mama. Yeah, play mama. That'd be the best. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. We had so much fun on Fully Loaded. Yes, we did. That yeah. was the, first of all, you guys treated me so good on that tour. I was like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be like? Right. I had never experienced anything like that. That oh. was the best experience. And I always wonder if, if my team felt some type of way about me going on tour with Bert. Because then they know they're going to have to do that for me now, too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to need all of this. All of this, I need all of this. I was taking notes. So Good. And our next, like, my tour dates, I'm like, I'm going to need this. I want this. I need this. I want this. They're like, well, you never had these kind of demands. I said, like, I didn't know I could demand these things. Right. I never, I never knew I could ask for this. Well, it was important to both of us that you guys felt valued in, in a really, like, very real way. Not just like, hey, thanks for coming. Yeah. But, like, that you felt happy and comfortable and entertained and taken care of and that you had fun. And that was the main thing. I had fun. Yeah. I felt safe. I That's felt good. taken care of. I felt heard. That's good. Like, all, everyone you hired was so amazing. I'm like, how did they find all these good people? Like, it's so hard to find good people. So then... I really wanted to sit down with you and just go, what is the criteria? Yeah. How do you hire? What are the questions you ask people so that I could start doing that too? Oh, I'll tell you. Good people get good people. You're a good person. So I'm yeah. shocked you hadn't had good people. Well, I think I've had good people. I just didn't know what I, I didn't know what I wanted. I yeah. didn't, I don't know what to expect. I don't, they didn't know, they're new to it too. They didn't know that. Like, there's a lot of, like, not that much experience around me. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, we're growing. Come on with me. Let's, let's grow together. Yeah. And then it's like, <sighs> things well, explode because nobody knows what they're doing. There's one person downstairs. I won't name her name, but she knows who she is, who cuts the fat really quick. Mm. So we've hired people, and she's been like, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to her. And when I can, I'll just I'll make adjustments. Because the thing is, the team has to work like as a team and everybody has to like each other and right and even though business is a business and you don't have to be best friends mm -hmm. but it's always better when everybody respects each other and gets right. along and works together and I keep saying this at downstairs are probably like not again but I always say I feel like we should be playing softball and not golf right yeah softball if you're on the bench you better be yelling loud for Cheering whoever, for your teammates. That's right. Yeah. Even if your team's in the outfield, if you're right. on the bench, you better be hollering. And there's no star players. Not always are there star players on softball. Right. They tend to be in baseball, but softball, everybody just freaking does the work. Yeah, everybody's playing. Everybody's and, yeah. Everybody's a star. Yeah. And golf, if you got a bunch of golfers, nobody's talking to each other. Everybody's out for themselves. Everybody's focused on their one game. And it's just not the same mentality. Right. So I think I just keep looking for softball players. And, you know, softball players don't mind getting dirty. Mm -hmm. They put their skirt in the dirt, brush it off, run for the next base. Well, don't talk about, about it. Well, now I'm about to be saying that in an interview. So have you ever played softball? <laughs> I've never played softball, but uh, <laughs> Georgia was a softball player. Right. And mad respect for that sport because right. – those girls just get dirty mm -hmm. and they just get the job done. So. And now that I think about it, every person that I know that have, that plays softball is a team player. Yeah. And they get things done and they're not hard to work with and they're like easy. Yeah. 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 
That's my good old redneck background. Yeah. <laughs> my and then redneck we could play a game of softball when exactly. we have downtime. Exactly. Pull the bus over. <laughs> yeah. Play some softball. <laughs> what you been doing since you got back? Well, I've been doing a lot, yeah. a lot. So, um, and I'm so sad I forgot to bring it. I've been harvesting honey. You have? Yeah, I brought I brought this big old box in the car, and then I'm like, look, I opened the box. I'm like, damn it, this is just the jars. It's not the actual honey. Oh no! But I have jars and jars of honey, so I'm gonna bring you some tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I got jars of honey. So I've been doing that and like trying to figure out the right labeling. I had been making mistakes with the label. <laughs> when I lied, I was going through test runs. But I got the honey tested from my, and they say that my honey is the best quality of honey in Southern California right now. And I got the hardest working bees. They are creating crazy amounts of honey. And I sit outside next to the beehive and I talk to the bees and I take deep breaths and tell them funny stories and just hope they go out there and do well like uh, they usually leave about 10 in the morning and so uh you know I could come out there like I wake up at like six every day even if I go to bed at three I wake up at six I don't know why but I do and I use the restroom and if it ain't raining or nothing like that and I go sit out there and I just talk to them for about 15 20 minutes I write some new jokes things that I dreamed about and then I go back in the house and I either take a shower or I go back to bed that's and, awesome yeah and then um I'll do some gardening a little bit of gardening. Um, I got to bring you some collard greens. Oh, no My way. My collards are off the chain right now. They are. Uh, growing like crazy. And I'm thinking about doing something with all this mint. I got like crazy amounts of mint that's growing. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to decide, do I want to make drinks? Do I want to do some like cosmetics? I don't know. Cosmetics with mint? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like, um, there's this shampoo that I really like. Well, I used to like, I don't, I can't find it no more. It's called Vante and this conditioner that it had like this mint in it or Ooh. whatever. And you could feel it tingling your scalp. I really like that. I don't know what happened to Vante. I don't know where they're at anymore. Hmm. Anyways. That's cool. You know what that. mint's good for? Not that you need to know this. If you put mint in your shampoo, it, it prevents you from getting lice. What? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Tea but tree good oil to know. too. Yeah, mint and tea tree oil. That's why I wash my kids' hair with that. Mm -hmm. Every year, public school kids, I'm like, come on, get some tea tree oil because I don't want lice. Uh, George had lice once and it was awful. Oh my goodness. It was awful. I had to wash everything. We had to put all our stuffed animals in the garage in a bag for like, I don't know, a week or something. It was yeah, bad. But yeah. yeah, there's something you can not that oh, you want to make. I didn't, I didn't know preventative that. shampoo, but. You know, black people don't really have that issue too much because uh, we <laughs> apply grease and heat to our hair all the time. There's always some heat or some grease in there. Grease, they don't like grease. That's what oh. I do know about lice. They don't They don't like uh, like oils like coconut oil, okay. the sulfur oils, or, you know, that live or whatever. They, they can't really live in that. Interesting. Yeah, oily hair. They yeah, really so you live. don't need that help. Yeah, but they might live in that natural oil, though. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that human oil, they might live in that. that they do. There's a little bit of that on the hair. A little bit of that. They little bit. They may do fine in that, yeah, but you put yeah. some of that. Put some of that tea tree. Yeah, right. No, that's gonna be a wrap on that dandruff too. Tea tree oil is good for dandruff is too. Is it? I didn't mm, know that. And bug bites. So why and are you into? Acne. How'd you get into beekeeping? Um. So I was. So Flamingo Estates, which is this really great uh, company that has like all these fresh vegetables and stuff and they sell them and they raise money for different farms and, and for kids and all kind of stuff. So they had came to me and asked me if I'd be willing to keep bees for six months and they would sell the honey and they were selling the honey for like $250 a jar. What? Yeah, they were selling for $250 a jar, but they were also helping kids get in school, mm -hmm. yeah, helping with housing, all kind of stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. And then the program had ended and they were going to take the bees away. And I was like, no, I want these bees. I will buy the bees, whatever. Like I, I have grown to love these bees and these bees have grown to love me. We're in a relationship. <laughs> so no. And um, then they said, well, you got to talk to the beekeeper. So I talked to the beekeeper guy. And he said, it's going to cost this much money a month. And he'll, you know, he'll help me with the drawing of the honey and all that stuff. And so, yeah, we worked it out. And now we're friends and we just make honey, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a great uh, grounding, zen, like in touch with nature, in touch with God routine you have going on. That's yeah, amazing. It is. And it's so funny because I got a lot of friends that are like super vegan. Some of them are mm. like super vegans. Mm. And they're like, you're stealing the food from the bees. I'm like, but there's not enough bees to eat all the honey that they make. So we just take the excess. That's it. Right. Like they're still, and they're making more and more. Like yeah. every two weeks is crazy. 
how much they make in two weeks. Sounds like they're thriving. They are so in then, the hood. Yeah, in that's South amazing. Central LA. There's so much vegetation. Like um, j- not just my garden, but like my neighbors have trees and they got gardens and flowers and their stuff. And I just like, planted all these new like wildflowers because I wanted to attract butterflies and hummingbirds. But I just got more bees. Wowza. Now, do have you planted uh, milkweed? What? Milkweed. What is that? Oh. Teach me about the Boy, milkweed, Mama. What's ready? that? Is that like milk thistle? No. Okay. Milkweed is a flower. Um, there's different varieties. So when you're in Southern California, you need to buy one that's from Southern California, that's native. Mm-hmm. Um, but it attracts monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies can only lay their eggs on milkweed. Milkweed is a weed, but it has these r- really pretty like red or orange or yellow little flowers at the top. There was a huge field in Oxnard, like acres and acres full of milkweed and millions of, of monarchs would migrate there every year. You know how people go up north and look at the poppies? Uh-huh. They would go to Oxnard and look at these butterflies. There'd just be millions of them. And they developed that land and all that milkweed is gone. So all those monarchs, like a lot of them died. So it's causing this like big possible extinction of this type of monarch butterfly that's in Southern California. They migrate from California to Mexico every year. Mm-hmm. But they have a genetic memory. Mm -hmm. So obviously a butterfly doesn't live very long. So it migrates, die, and lays eggs on a milkweed and then keeps on and keeps on to Mexico and comes back. But their genetic memory remembers Mm. where they laid that egg on what plant. And their ancestors come back to the same place year after year. So when we built, we didn't build our house. We remodeled our house. And when we re-landscaped, I was like, I want milkweed, front yard, backyard. And then I want a butterfly bush next to it because the monarch eats the butterfly bush and then lays the egg on milkweed. I have so many butterflies. I have like 8, 10, 12 butterflies every day. All day long in my front yard and my backyard. I did it here at the studio too. Uh Lined the driveway with it. We have so many butterflies here. I told Whitney Cummings about it. She had. She was like, "My house is just all butterflies because they're desperate for. They don't. Nobody plants milkweed because it's a weed. Oh, I'm about to plant it. You should. I'm gonna plant it. It's amazing. I don't mind if it's a weed if it's gonna bring beautiful nature to me. It does. Bert called me the other day from the backyard here and he was like, I just have to tell you, I, the butterflies are everywhere at this house and I never would have thought to do that. And it's so grounding to just sit in your backyard and watch yeah. two, three, four butterflies just come and go and land and light. And it's really, it's really cool. It's really I cool. Just that. planting a couple plants and. Oh, I'm going to plant more than a couple. Oh, I've got now, a ton. Is there anything else you could do with it? Does it have any medicinal purposes? I don't know about that. I don't know. Well, I'm going to research. Yeah. You know me. I know that that's the only thing their caterpillars can eat. They mm. can't eat anything else. So, anyway. Milkweed. Add it to your... Oh, yeah, right? Literally, I'm going to leave here and order some. Then you can Matter talk fact, to let the, me order some off Amazon. You can talk to uh, the butterflies and the bees. Yeah. Right? I'll text it to you so you remember. Yeah. That way you don't have to think about it. But yeah. It's I, in my brain now. It's not going nowhere. Right? I it, love that stuff. Yeah, I got to get it. I love it. And this is kind of the perfect time to plant. Now, will... Is it a year-round weed? Or uh, is it Yes. Like, it is? Yes. Good. It's Good. year-round. So then I could plant it right away. You can. The yeah. butterflies are not year round. I know they're not. But but I can get is. it growing. Yes, you can. Yeah. So and you it, can buy them kind of big at the nurseries. You can buy them already, like ready to go. Oh. So I like to start everything out from seedlings. Though. You do. Yeah, I talk to the plants and everything. I'm a, I'm weird like that. I, You're I, I feel like weird. I feel like when you talk to them, they like take on I don't know maybe some of your personality or your genetic code. I don't know, and like. Catered to me. Now, I remember I talked to Whitney one time and she told me what she do for her plants. And I said, girl, I'm not going that far. What'd she do? She told me that she put her cycle in the in the soil. Okay. I won't be doing that either. Yeah, I won't be doing that. No. No, no. What's she talking about? Really? She's talking about, yeah. And then she said that the plants pick up your DNA and then they start like making nutrients, making things that your body needs. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she said. And I said, okay, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Like on her spinach? Like that? Not put it on the spinach, but, but like the, around ground. it. Yeah. Like out of a diva cup. Okie dokes. And then puts it around like on the on the earth. 
okay to each his own. I said, all right then. Now, I used to put my chicken poop on that. I had chicken, yeah, chicken poop. Yeah, chicken poop, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken poop. Sometimes I use dog poop. I put the dog poop in the composter. Yeah. Put the dead leaves, all that, like yep. some unnecessary papers that ain't got like too much ink on it or whatever. Yep. Put that in there. Let like, churn it all up. Yep. You know, and use that as fertilizer. Now, how'd you get into gardening in general? <sighs> My grandma got me into it from Miss Alice. Yeah, Miss Alice. Yep, Miss Alice. She got me into it. She um. I didn't know she gardened. Oh, my goodness. Her flower bed. Don't step in my flower bed. <laughs> Don't be in my flower bed. What you doing in my flower bed? And I used to be like, why is this a flower bed? You can't even take a nap in it. I used to, <laughs> I used to think you could sleep. I used to try to lay in there and be like, this is not comfortable for sleeping at all, Grandma. Because she would be like, you know, we go outside to play. She'd be like, Don't, once you come inside, that's it. You inside. No yeah. in and outs. No in and outs. So I been wanting a nap. And she had this beautiful flower bed underneath this pomegranate tree and orange mm. tree. And like the sun would come right directly on it. And then as the sun would move, it would be like all shade. Mm. So me and my cousins, we would go lay in the flower bed. And she'd be like, get out of my flower bed. What y'all laying in the flower bed for? And I'd be like, but grandma, you said it's a flower bed. So I'm thinking like. Bed. A bed's a bed, right? Yeah. Well, we had to learn. We learned. You yeah. know, a few squats and we learned. Don't go in her flower bed no more. There you That's go. That's not an actual bed. That's a bed for flowers, not for people. That's so funny. And so she would grow like all kind of foods. She'd grow like radishes, tomatoes. She loved growing tomatoes, bell peppers and stuff like that. And then she had these huge plum trees in the backyard Ooh. and nectarine trees. And she planted a walnut tree. Gosh. All these, like, and she said, like, you know, like, basically, I guess my uncle, who I didn't get to meet, uh, he passed away before I was born, but he planted the plum tree and that kind of got her going with the plant and all these other things. And so she's like, and then I remember the city was trying to come by and spray pesticides on all the fruit trees and stuff. And she was like, nope, I'll pay the fine. I'll pay the fine. Don't spray my trees. Don't spray my trees. And I remember the day they sprayed her trees, she went oh. bananas. She was very upset. Yeah. She was writing letters very aggressively. I was like, ooh, I ne I've never seen her so mad. Like, Wowza. She was very upset. She's like, they trying to kill my trees. They're trying to kill my trees. And, then she planted some bamboo around. Oh. And uh, I didn't understand that. Bamboo and eucalyptus mm -hmm. uh, trees around those trees. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I found out she did that because it absorbs toxins. They oh. take the toxins out of the earth and help other plants to heal and stuff. I didn't know that. So, yeah, plants help each other heal, just like people help each other heal. Yes, it's true. I know when I, I planted a bunch of fruit trees at our house and I did some research and you, they have to, some of them have to cross-pollinate mm -hmm. like you can't have the same species of plum tree and not have another species because they won't they won't pollinate they won't produce fruit mm -hmm. so i had to buy two different plum trees two different types of plums two different types of cherries two different types of apples so that they could help each other yeah yeah it's really amazing have you seen this uh documentary called the biggest little farm no <gasps> tiffany you would love that really? and so it's about this couple in L.A., the guy was a photographer for Discovery Channel, mm -hmm. like a, a wildlife photographer, and a cinematographer. And his wife, I think, was maybe an actress. I don't remember. Uh -huh. But they adopted a dog, and the dog was having a lot of anxiety. And they were like, what if we just buy a farm and just, like, move out of L.A. and just change our life entirely? So they did that. And this documentary is about the, like, two and a half years it took them to get the farm really up and running, you can go visit the farm now. Mm -hmm. It's in it's in Ventura County, I think. It's oh, not okay, far yeah. away, and um, it's really cool to watch how they they farmed like my grandparents farmed. Where their farm, my grandparents' farm, was eighty eight acres, mm -hmm. and it was like an ecosystem. Yeah. So everything had a purpose, including the predators. And everything was super balanced. And I didn't really understand my grandparents' farm until I watched that documentary. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I think that's how farming used to be when people would farm, like, on the homestead. And that's what they ate. Right. You know? Right. We, and we, you use all the different plants mm -hmm. to help. Like, that's a, I like mint so much because it keeps rodents away. It does. Mm -hmm. You're so right. So I got it surrounding the house. But I'm like, it's too much mint growing. I need to eat it or do something with it. Right. Because it's so much. And marigolds keep mosquitoes away. Yes. Mm. Yes. And did you know that, uh, I think it's guava? No, fig. Fig trees. Is it figs? Or is it guava? Figs, because fig Newton, fig trees eat wasps and mosquitoes. I did not know and that. And they cannot make fruit without eating a bug. What? Yeah, and the wasps lay their eggs inside of the figs. What? Yeah. How does a fig tree eat a bug? Oh, so it lands on the, so it lands, so the, 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 
the bug lands on the flower, right? Uh-huh. And it'll lay the eggs and the plant will start eating the eggs up. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. And whatever eggs survive, right? They'll eat some of the plant and go. So the plant will take some of their babies and some of the babies will live. How about that? Mm-hmm. And they that's how they make together. the fruit. It's either guava or fig. I'm going to say it's fig. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. There's so much... I don't know about life in general. There's so much we don't know about all that stuff. It's yeah, really it's the cool. circle. It's the circle of life. And everything is here for a reason. We need it all. I agree. Mm-hmm. How many books have you written? How many books have I written? I've written three books. Three. Two three are, books. Two are children's books? One is a children's book. Yeah. The other one, the, the other one's almost finished. The other children's book is like, it's in the process. Two adult books. Uh, but I got two books out right now, and that's, Tiffany Haddish, The Last Black Unicorn, and Layla, The Last Black Unicorn. And Layla is the kid version of me. And Tiffany, that's about me. And then I got another book that's getting ready to come next year. And it's called Tiffany Haddish, I Curse You With Joy. Aw. Yeah. Because I want everybody to be happy. Heck yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. How'd you like writing books? I like it a lot. Because it's like you get a lot off of your chest. And also be able to share your experiences with people from your point of view and they get people get to see my personality and that I'm not just like some people think I'm just one note I'm just one type of whatever but it's That's I'm a true. onion mm. I, it's a layers and layers and you know uh it's funny I was sitting with my therapist the other day and it was telling me that basically I I am an extreme extrovert that happens to be an extreme introvert interesting and I was like, that, those two don't even go together. It's like, but look at how you carry yourself. You are an extreme introvert. Like, you get out, you're in around a group of people, around people you like. You're like, hey, 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 energy's up, energy's up. And as soon as everyone's looking the other way or no one's talking to you or you're like, you get time to be alone, you shut down. You are quiet. Mm. You don't jump into like, you want to do stuff like activities, but you don't jump to go do the activities. Mm. I said, this is true. That is true. So how do you charge your battery? Is it with people or by yourself? By myself uh-huh. is where I charge best. Uh-huh. And then I'm ready to be around people. Got and it. I and I usually need like six hours alone. Uh-huh. This is probably why my relationships have not been doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell with, you, I'm that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm married. I, I'm well, I call myself a highly social introvert. Yeah. That's what I am. Yes. Yeah, I here. love socializing. Yeah. But there's a certain point where I need to be by myself. That's why my marriage works. Mm-hmm. Because I know if I can't be by myself today, Wednesday, he's on a plane. Right. I got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Cool. And then I'm ready for him to come back. Yeah. Right. And then when he's here for like 10 days, by day eight, I'm like, tick tock. <laughs> Mama needs some alone time. I need you to get out. But hey, don't you got a tour or something to do? Yeah, get yeah. out, do something else. But but he's the opposite. I have always said if if he could just build me a baby Bjorn that he could fit in, uh-huh. he would just ride on my belly all the time if I'm right. in sight of him. Right. He's not so bad when he's on the road. He calls me a lot. Yeah. But when he's at home, he's like that kid that's on your skirt tail all yeah, the time. Following you, want to go with you to the bathroom yes, and everything. Everything. And part of that I find very endearing and very like sweet it. and very cute, but it's not how I charge my battery. Mm-mm. So I read this newspaper article, it's been years ago, probably probably six or seven years ago, where I went, I understand now why I get really frustrated with you. And that's why. Because mm-hmm. I need the separation. And when I showed him the newspaper article and made him read it, he was like, okay, now I understand. You're not rejecting me. Mm-hmm. You just need to recharge your battery. And yeah. then you, then I get you all to myself again. Right. And then I just got to let you recharge. So maybe you need to well, I was tell that to your relationship. Yeah, this, this guy that I'm dating now, I told him, I said, look, man, I'm like a cell phone. You got to plug it up and walk away. Right. He said, but the cell phone still works when you plug it up. I said, well, turn it off. <laughs> right. I need to be off. Like, I need off time. And like, he'll come over to my house and he'll be like, hey, what's like... Come on, you just chilling. I'm like, yeah, we're in my space. This right. is my cave. Yeah, my dwelling, and I'm chilling. Are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? I'll make you some, and I'll go in there and cook, and I'll be smiling and stuff, but I won't be talking. Yeah, because I I don't want to talk. I want to shut up. Well, there were quiet. you were moments like that in the tour. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning. Yeah, I'm no good. 
No, it's not that you were no good. Just, it was very clear that you were in your space. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're no good. Yeah. It's just that you're not on all the time. Well, People yeah, think comics are on all the time. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I can't be on all the time because no. then I'll get angry. Do you ever feel this? Like this, I was trying to explain this to my sister. I was like, sometimes when I realize that I have not had no alone time except for when I go to sleep, like in all, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days have gone by and I have not been alone. I've been surrounded by people the whole time. I start to feel like inside my body this fire mm -hmm. and I want to fight. Mm -hmm. I want to go, let me alone. Like I just, I feel like if I go, let me alone, like fire come out my mouth and like all kind of like darts will start shooting out at people and I'll hurt them and I don't want to hurt nobody. Yeah. And I'm just like, just leave me, just let me have some time. And so my sister starts, she's noticing like the signs. She could see it like right away. She'd be like, hey guys, Tiffany needs three hours. Nobody call. And then she'll like try to take my phone from me. And I'm like, no, it's my phone. She's like, no, 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 no. You need three hours. I'm like, you right. Take the phone. Like, I'm going I'm to just chill. That's awesome. And I'll just literally sit. I might write. I might go out by the bees. I might pull some weeds. I might just lay down in the grass. Whatever. Just shut up for like three hours. That's really great that you recognize that. And now you have somebody on your on your team, so to speak. Yeah. That recognizes that too. Yeah, we told well, well, I wrote a letter to everybody on my team and let them all know. And they was like, oh, that makes sense why your moods be swinging. Because I, I get like when it's not. You get testy. I'm just so like, yeah. And then yeah. I feel like a raw nerve and I just want to. Leave me alone. Go yeah. away. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want a picture? Okay. <laughs> I'll take a picture. <laughs> like, but really, I want to be left alone. Yeah. Hey, when people ask me to take pictures and I'm in a doctor's office. I think that's the worst place to ask somebody to take a picture. Let me tell you a story about that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Georgia fell when she was three years old and broke her jaw. Broke her teeth inside her gum line. Oh, right? No. Bert was on tour. He came home from tour. And we scheduled, a, she had to have surgery to have her teeth removed. So we go in for surgery. It was horrible. I'm giving you a really abridged version, but it was horrible. They couldn't get her. She was three, so she was tiny. They couldn't get a vein to get her under. To do this quick surgery, they just couldn't get her under. She's hysterical. She's screaming. I, I, it took like four days to get the surgery scheduled. So I hadn't cried in four days. I was being strong mama for her. And once they got her under, I fell completely apart and went into the lobby of the um, oral surgeon's office. Mm -hmm. And across from me is Whitney Houston. Mm. And I'm sobbing. And Whitney is trying to comfort me, like, just with a look. Because she's obviously, she's a mama. Uh, she doesn't know I'm here because of my child, unless she heard her screaming, which mm -hmm. is possible. But she kept going, it's going to be okay. And trying to talk to me. Bert comes out. He went to the bathroom, locked me out of the bathroom and was sobbing in the bathroom. So he came sobbing next to me. They come get us. They, we have a recovery area. There's like a couch and I'm holding Georgia as she wakes up and Whitney Houston comes through the curtain and starts like rubbing Georgia's hair. And she goes, oh, she's going to be okay. You're such a good mama. She's going to be okay. And we hear the asshole anesthesiologist say, Whitney Houston, where's Kevin Costner? Ha, 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 ha. And I wanted to come out of my skin for her because I thought she's coming in for oral surgery. That movie is like 10, 12 years old. How dare you do that to a person of fame, no matter who that person is? Right. I mean, that's awful. I felt my heart broke for her. She it was a really And then she gotta trust these people to not, cut her it, mouth open. And 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 she got that's why I won't let nobody put me to sleep. If she if she sleep, they might be taking pictures of her while she sleep, like while oh she under God, all this. Thought stuff. about that. Like so much could be going on. That's why I want that I try to keep myself as healthy as possible. Now I have some bad habits, but I be trying to counteract with good habits. Cause yeah. I do not want to be put to sleep. When I had to get, I had to get um, the, my teeth. My teeth was messed up. They said they wanted to put me under. I'm allergic to titanium. I had a, a titanium screw in there. They had to take that out. 
or whatever. And they said they need to put me under to do it. I said, you better give me some muscle relaxers or something. I'm not going under. I'll take the pain. I don't care. This needs to get out my mouth anyway. So whatever it takes to get out my mouth, get it out. But I'm not going to sleep. Wow. You're not putting me to sleep. That's what you're not going to do. And so they gave me some muscle relaxers and a bunch of Novocaine all in my mouth. And I was like, okay, okay. (laughs) <laughs> oh my God! Hey, oh my God! Look at that! And they understood every single word I was saying. I said, I don't care. Nobody say dentist know multiple language, and one of the languages is stuff in your mouth. Right? <laughs> I hear you. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like, and they know everything you said. And they That's start telling funny. me a story. I'm telling this story like, oh, yeah, 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 that's so funny. I never thought about that, though. That's kind of scary, being put to sleep with somebody. You have to have a witness in there with you. Yeah, I would want somebody to be there. Heck yeah. I would want somebody to be there. And then do I even trust the somebody? I would have to be one of my siblings because yeah, I trust yeah. them very much and I know they would protect me it would have to be one of them because anybody else they might I don't know who knows who knows my security Danny Danny would protect me Danny wouldn't let nobody do nothing everybody downstairs was hoping he was with you today oh really yes (laughs) he's He's so sweet he's the best yeah I love him to death he and Javier seem to get along really well yeah yeah I think he still talks to Javier he he brought him up the other day I was talking to Danny he brought up Javier that's so cute yeah they know he done made him a new friend that's the best yeah lifelong friends from Fully Loaded (laughs) yeah more than one yeah um yeah, that that was I. I hear what you're saying about getting your picture taken at a doctor's office. So rude. It's so rude. But like, I, but here goes the thing. So then, when I like they finished the procedure, I'm high as a kite, right? Because I got the Novocaine in my mouth. But they gave me one muscle relaxer. I never had a muscle relaxer before. It felt so. I was like, I need another one of them blue pills. <laughs> She's like, wait, I'm not, I would not have kind of, I need another one blue pill. She said, I can't give you no more blue pills. One thing that I'm going to move out. I'm going to move out. Good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I take two. I take two. I like many. And then I start filming myself. Right. And it was so funny. I'm like, there's the bank in there on me. I can barely talk. It was so funny. And that dentist has been so great. It was funny. I was harassing her like maybe a week later. I was like, so I'm feeling better. Everything's good. Uh, I finished my antibiotics, everything. But what's up with them blue pills? Can I get one more of those blue pills? I mean, I feel like that blue pill will knock out all my pains from my period. If we could just get that blue pill. Maybe if I get like just blue pill dust. Right. To put in my sodas or my juice. And then that'll get rid of all my period cramps. Just slice it up real thin. Yeah, just give me two blue pills. I'll make it last a year. Don't worry. Totally. That's (laughs) really funny. She was like, I cannot give you any more blue pills. Those are not, you, that's not something you could take like recreationally. That's because you wouldn't do the other thing. And I was like, man, and well, I hope I never have to have no more like oral surgeries or any kind of surgery. But if I do have that one, I want another one of them blue pills. I don't even know what the blue pill was. Something good. It was good. It was something good. I mean, my whole body was like, eh. like the <laughs> most relaxed I've ever felt my entire life. Wow. And I guess I'm always under like a little bit of stress. Like it's always stress or something I'm concerned about. Mm. But that was like, I never felt that. I, I'm like, I understand why people do hard drugs now. Right. Prescription drugs, especially. I call those hard drugs. Oh, Because they're like candies. They're hard candies. Ah, okay. People pop them. Yes, they do. And I understand now. Maybe they're easy drugs. Because people pop them. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But it, it does. I'm sure it. I'm sure it could probably ruin my organs in some kind of way. But whatever that blue pill was, Yummy. when I turn 70, <laughs> I will have that. <laughs> I will have that in my repertoire of drugs I will be doing at 70. That's great. That's my plan. That's a good plan. Yeah. What are you working on now you're excited about? Um, I'm working on a grocery store. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Very excited about that. What do you mean? You're working on a grocery I'm store. I'm working what on does that building mean? a grocery store. Okay, Tiffany. <laughs> you have to know this about yourself, right? You are a powerhouse of a human being. Truly. You have to know this. She ready? Yeah, Productions. And the foundation, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 
And we're doing some great stuff with the foundation for the kids. We just finished doing a, a Kids in the Spotlight. Our kids, uh, they made their own little movies. They little did? short films. And they're entered in festivals now. And hopefully they win something. I hope they win. Like, you know, if I could pay somebody to make them win, I would. But I don't know who that is. Uh, it's not the Grammys. But uh, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. They, they already won just doing their project. They felt like you could see their... Like over the summer, their self-esteem shoot up times 10. Of course. And that is just, that makes me so happy. So happy. I mean, all right, you have a Grammy, Mm -hmm. right? For Mm -hmm. your stand-up album. Yes. First African-American woman to host Saturday Night Live. Uh, Yes, stand-up comedian. Yes. Stand-up comedian. First African-American stand-up comedian. Thank you for correcting me. First African-American Jewish stand-up female comedian i host. mean my goodness yes, and beekeeper at that first Be- african-american beekeeper. stand-up jewish beekeeper yeah beekeeper <laughs> philanthropist author yeah a dancing machine a machine a thesaurus of information yes well no that's an encyclopedia why do thesaurus. you think you do you think you were born this powerhouse or do you think it was something that you learned or that you watch someone else do and replicated. Why do you think you are this person that achieves so many things at such a high level? Wife of the Party is sponsored by HelloFresh. You guys know I'm a huge fan of HelloFresh. I hate planning meals. I hate planning meals. And I hate cooking. But HelloFresh makes it so easy because they send you all the ingredients you need for recipes. The recipe card is easy to follow. Meals take maybe 20, maybe 30 minutes, usually 20 minutes to prepare. And they're always delicious. My kids love them. I love them. And it's pretty healthy and wholesome. Uh, When it comes to options, honestly, more is more. That's why HelloFresh's menu includes 40 recipes and over 100 add-on items to choose from every week. And, you know, HelloFresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door. This fall, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50wife and use the code 50wife for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That is a deal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50wife and use the code 50WIFE for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. Wife of the Party is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you know, if you're listening to my podcast regularly, I am in therapy, have been in therapy for years. I am a big believer in therapy. If something's not working in your life, it doesn't have to be major to need to reach out to someone professional to just make your life that much better. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. You know, in my experience with therapy, who I'm working with uh, as my therapist is so important. It's the difference between finding the right mechanic or the wrong mechanic for your car. So the ability that uh, BetterHelp gives you to switch therapists anytime at no charge is so incredible. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash wife today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash wife. Why do you think you are this person that achieves so many things at such a high level? I think it's because, okay, I think I was born to do these things. Like, I think I already had a plan when I got here, before I even got here, before I even got in my mom, I think I had a plan already. Uh huh. And I think that um, because of the mother that I got, my grandma and the, my aunties, the people that were surrounding me in those really formative years were always talking about what they could do to make things better. They were always talking about making things better. Mm-hmm. You know, my aunt, my my aunt, one, she was talking about her music career. She wanted to make that, like make the music business better. My other auntie, she loved to dance and stuff. And she wanted to, you know, figure out a way to get dancers paid and do things better on that realm. My mom, 
She's always about small businesses. You know, she had all these little businesses and she just wants to create jobs for people and, and create income for us and create generational wealth. But she didn't call it that then. She kept, she called it, you know, I'm just trying to make sure y'all have an inheritance. I want my kids to have something to inherit, right? And my grandma was just about, you know, being a good person, mm -hmm. showing up. You know, when you say you're going to show up, show up. If you're going to do something, do the best you can do at it. Mm -hmm. Don't have, if you can, if you're going to halfway do it, j don't even do it. Don't bother you. Just walk away. Like, just say, I'm not capable. If you're going to half-ass it. If you're going to show up, show up all the way. And if you, you try to give your best and it's still not good enough, well, then figure out a way to do better. Mm -hmm. Like, figure out a way to do better. Like, always figuring out how to do better. You can yeah. be better. You can be better. Like, I remember I had got, like, all these B's on my report card. I was so proud of myself and my progress report card I got. And I was like, look, I got B's. And I was like, that's what you're supposed to do. You're actually not even doing what you're supposed to do. You should be having better grades. It should be better. Why is it not better? And I'm like, because it's B for <laughs> best. B best. <laughs> it's B. It's almost A is totally. B. It's not good enough. Right. Right. It's not good enough. And I started to learn, like, and then as I started living with all these different people in the different foster homes and stuff and being around all these strangers all the time, I started realizing, like, a lot of people are not trying to do their best. They're just trying to skate by. They just, at the bare minimal. So even if I put in 75% of effort on something, that's better than hundreds of other people, what You're others right. hundreds are putting in. So... I'm like, if I can figure out a way to schedule out my life, to do all these things that I dreamed of, and there's so many things I've dreamed of being and wanting to do, if I can figure out how to schedule that out and just attempt 75% of it, I'm doing better than average. But where did you learn that mindset? Did you just come up with it yourself? No, I probably picked it up from something. Somebody. Somebody somewhere. You know what's funny? So I'm uh, preparing to be Flojo, right? And I'm like doing all this research on her and stuff. And I used to love her when I was in high school, you know, watch all her races, everything, whatever she was doing. I was trying to find out about it. And then I have forgot, I had completely forgot that I used to watch her exercise video. Like right before every track meet, I would do her exercise video like the night before. I forgot that I used to do that. How crazy. Right. And then cut to I'm doing research and I'm like digging in my garage for something looking for a video of me in high school. And then I find this video and it is Florence Griffin Joyner's workout video. Crazy. I said, what the heck? I didn't even know I had this. That's crazy. I put it in the VCR. I still got a VCR. Yeah. Put it in the VCR. Start watching it. She's saying all these things. I'm like, she's still in my line. That's my line. I've been saying that for years. I've been saying it. No. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I probably stole it from her. That's amazing. <laughs> I've been copying her for years. Didn't even realize it. Didn't even realize it. Wow. Like the whole looking at yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and like instead of saying mean things to yourself, say nice things to yourself. Right. Say something good. Like find something that you like on your face and your hair. If you can't find nothing that you like, just look directly into the darkest part of your eyeballs and say your full name and say, I love you. I approve of you. You're right. doing good. I'm so proud of you. So in my mind, I do that. And I tell myself that I'm talking to every cell in my body. Because mm -hmm. right here, this is a whole, there's all these other living things, you know, molecules and stuff that's doing their job. And I, I need to congratulate them because I'm not making it easy for them. Right. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, I like eating certain things I shouldn't eat. Right. And I like to drink, you know, I just learned this whole thing about alcohol and what it do to the brain. I'm like, dang it. I know, right? I wish I didn't know that. I wish I didn't know that. Now yeah. I can't drink. I know, right? Ugh. Yeah, you can't Just unknow. Just I water it down. I water it down. Right. You can't unknow what you know. Right. And you can't do better till you know better. And now That's that I right. know better, I can do better. And then it's like, it's so funny because it made sense to me once I saw that video. Uh, like, how I've been like, how from like high school, like when I started watching those videos and life was really hard. Yeah. Like as a teenager, I think, and as a, as a kid, I think that's the hardest time of my whole life. Like, I've had struggles as an adult, but those were my choices. I made bad choices. When I was a kid, I didn't have the opportunity to make those choices. I didn't have power over my, my body the way that I would have liked to, mm -hmm. right? There was adults making choices for me mm -hmm. and they were affecting me and they were making really choices for themselves or what they thought would be best. And it was really 
some of them cho- those choices were hurtful right. and painful, but I learned from like I, I didn't forget. And I had like this excellent memory as a kid. And my memory is pretty good now, but as a kid, it was excellent. You could say something to me and I could repeat it verbatim, say it how you said it, like, because I, I was really paying attention. Also, I couldn't read. So it was like, I need to listen so I can know. Right. Right. And then I got to like 21, start drinking. That, that skill has slowly faded away. Oh, interesting. But I never forget how I feel around you. Yeah. I never forget. Like, if it's really, like, something that made me feel an emotion or whatever, like, uh, jolting, I'm going to remember everything that was said, everything that was done. Uh, but, yeah, alcohol has slowly wiped away my ability for super memory, mm-hmm. super recall. But I notice when I don't drink at all, man, my recall is, like, so the skill is in there. Yeah. It just gets messed up with the alcohol. Did just you know foggy. that alcohol makes little dents in your brain? No, I did not. Yeah. Dents? Dents. I'll send you the video. What? Yeah, I watched a TED Talk, so it could be all wrong. Could be no, some guy making No, probably right. Stuff. But he was showing the brain scans and like what it looks like, and it is crazy. And it's the it's the main organ in your body that needs the oxygen, needs the blood. Like, but when you drink a little too much, it blocks it, and that's why you be you can't walk right. You poisoned yourself, right? Crazy. Alcohol is a little bit of poison, so you can't like your stay, your balance is off. You you become a partially deaf, so you talk. 10 times louder. You just want to dance and move and your body wants you want to do this because your body's trying to get the poison out. Shut up. That's fascinating. I have to watch that TED Talk. I'm going to send it to you. Please. Give it to Burt Kreischer. Yeah. He's been working out though. I see him. He uh, has. Okay. He's lost like 22 pounds, something like that. That's good. Still snoring though, right? Not so bad. Not so bad. Not so bad. Just Mm -hmm. teeny tiny. I can sleep through it at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, before it's like the windows were rattling. (laughs) You know, it was like, I felt like the walls were going in and out and in and out. It was awful. Yeah. But now I can sleep through it. It's okay. No, good, good. Because, you know, that tape works. That mouth tape. Did I tell you about the tape? Yeah, so you tape your mouth shut. (laughs) But he has, he has like a, a deviated septum. Uh, he has something going on in his nose mm-hmm. that makes it hard for him to breathe through both nostrils. Yeah, but if you if you shut that mouth, their the nostrils will open up. They'll, they'll figure it the, out. Oh, the body gonna be like, oh no, you're not. No, no, we gotta open that mug up. Open it up. I, he would have an absolute panic attack if I taped his mouth shut. Oh my goodness! He never shuts his mouth. It would be a good challenge, though. It would. It'd be good a good luck. challenge <laughs> just to get them. Just let's see if you could breathe just through your nose for an hour. We could also say, let's see how quickly this panic attack happens. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. my God. He'd go right into it. I can he see would him turn red. Fight or flight. Yeah. Immediately. He'd immediately throw him into that. Immediately. You're working on a story about Flojo? Yeah, so um, we have, we're writing a script, getting that together, and I'm slowly transforming my body so that I could be in it. Uh, but yeah, Flojo, because she did so much. Uh-huh. She did so, and the things she kicked open the doors for women in sports, like kicked it wide open. And she did, yeah. Maybe took a piece of it off the hinges, because uh, you know females in sports back then, you know, before she blew up, it was considered like you're a tomboy, you're a boyish. It's not attractive, you know. It's not a beauty thing. Mm-hmm. There's no beauty in that. And she flipped that script, baby. She that had the she hair, did. the makeup, the nails. Mm-hmm. She was also, she was very talented. She could do, she could do her own hair. She was a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. She did her own nails, those long nails. I remember, yeah. Uh, she did that herself. I remember she she would run with one leg, whole leg of yeah. leggings. Do you then... know how that happened? No. So she was, she would make her own costumes too. She would make her own uniforms. She sold them, did all that. She designed them and sold them, got the fabric, all that, did that herself. And she had injured one of her legs. It had a big bruise on it. Oh. And she wanted to cover up the bruise. And, like, everybody is always wearing, like, the, the sh- little short panties. Like, that's what they're running in. So she was, like, wanted to cover up the bruise. And she had made these long, like, pants that she had. Didn't put the other one on yet. She just put the half one just to see what it looked like. Yeah. And she goes down to her husband, Al Joyner, and she goes, what do you think? What do you think about this? And he started laughing at her. She was like, what do you think if I wear this in a race? And he just... Busted up laughing. She said, oh, you think it's funny? Oh, you think this is funny? Okay. I think it's cute. And she was like, I'm going to wear it out. And she did. And it made tablet. It was crazy because she was mostly covered. Yeah. While the other girls has got their booty cheeks hanging out the yeah. back. Yeah. 
You know, you're seeing camel toe in the front. Totally. She, they basically out there half naked. Yeah. She got just one whole leg covered <laughs> and they like, oh my gosh, right? what is she doing? She's so provocative. That's yeah. what, and I'm like, she's covered though. Yeah. Then she did another one that was like lacy. She did it out of lace, and which was so beautiful to me. And she had the hoodie on, like so she had this all tight. She's hitting it, running, winning the races. And they're like, she's out here being a sexual deviant. Like, that's like sexual. What is sexual about this? This is beauty. Yeah, she was beautiful. This is just straight up beauty. Yeah. And she's covered. Yeah. You guys have everybody with their booty cheeks hanging out. Right. But it's tight standard. Shirts. It's standard. Yeah, she just wasn't standard. That's more sexual than what she was doing. Uh -huh. What she was doing was art and class mm -hmm. and bringing pizzazz and fashion and bringing... This woman, she did so. She was so talented. Mm. She got to do everything she ever wanted to do. She wanted to act. She acted. She wanted to design clothes. She designed the uniforms for the Indiana Pacers. I didn't know that. Yes, a lot of people don't know. She had clothing stores. She wanted these clothing stores. Did she had them in? I think in China or Japan. In China, I believe she had two clothing stores. The day she died, they were going to be releasing her shoes. Mm -mm. And then she passed. Mm. And it was like, let's pause on that. I don't Why even know what happened. She, was, she had, she was having seizures. She had oh. a lesion on her brain. So oh. she had a seizure in her sleep and passed away. Oh, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. My gosh. Yeah, I remember her very well. I remember watching her run a bunch and uh, just thinking you can't not watch her. Because not only was she beautiful, she was really interesting. Yes. You know, she was so smart. Really fascinating. And you just couldn't not watch her. Mm -hmm. I mean, when she was talking or running or just walking around, she just was magnetic. And she was so motivational. And she used mm -hmm. to go to the schools. Like, I go to schools now and talk to kids. And I didn't know. I knew that she went to, like, certain, like, youth centers or whatever. But I didn't know she was, like, going to the elementary schools, going to the junior high schools, going to, like, and just motivating the kids, teaching them exercise, workout programs and stuff. She was very focused on making sure the kids knew how their body works. Like, you got to take care of your body. She was one of the first... Uh, athletes to be like, yeah, I'm just doing vegetables right now, just all vegetables, juicing, mm. like just on the, just let me just juice. Like, like she'd be like, yeah, I'm drinking my juice. Like it'd be beet juice, you <laughs> know, pomegranate juice. And like, back then, wrong. nobody like, did that. Nobody was no, doing that. Nobody. And so they're like, you know, oh, she must be on drugs or whatever. But she's like, nah, uh, I'm on plants. <laughs> <laughs> Plant life is make strong. Like, you know, if you see the strongest animal in the jungle. Don't eat meat at all. No, you think she's putting her cycle around her plants? No, I'm she pretty <laughs> sure she was not, <laughs> maybe not cycling maybe not. her plants. I, maybe I'm, not. I, I'm pretty sure she was not maybe doing not, that. Maybe not, maybe not. And I'm, I pray that she was not. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you not done that you want to do? Um, it doesn't have to be in entertainment, just at all. Oh, I, okay. So I want to go to Papiete or Rarotonga. What? Or Fiji. I haven't done that yet. I want to do that. I haven't been up in a hot air balloon yet. I would like to do that. I, I definitely want to do that. I want to do that. And maybe I'll end up in the Wizard of Oz. Maybe. Maybe I'll end up in Oz. No. <laughs> um, I, okay. I want, okay, there's weird things that I want to do. I love it. Some things that I want to do that might not be, I don't know. I want to make, I want to make a clothing line, mm -hmm. um, but I want to sew it. Okay. I want to sew all the like outfits and I want to make like the first 50 and then they can manufacture them or something. Or maybe I only make like 10 things. Like I make this, I made a jumper that is so freaking cute. Wait, do you sew then? Yeah, I sew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandma showed me how to sew. She did. Yeah. She showed me how to do a lot of things. And I'm like, I feel like, a, you know, a little mini version, like put all, all the things that she's put into me. I'm like putting it out there. But uh, I think she was the better version. I'm just like the knockoff. It's, but, no, 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 that's not true. I knew your grandma. I didn't know yeah. her super well, but um, she was not as energetic as you are at work. She really? was very put together. Well, yeah, she was always saying you have to be a certain way at work. She you was. carry yourself a and certain way. When you talk about how she talked to you, that's not my experience of her at work. She was very quiet. Uh, she didn't. She didn't not make friends, but she didn't really, she wasn't really like friends with everybody, mm -hmm. but she was friendly to everybody. Yeah. And everyone adored her. She worked really hard and she just had this poise and grace about her that was just undeniable. Yeah. She was, I was a little, I wasn't 
scared of her. I was deeply respectful of her. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's exactly what she wanted to. But like people think I'm their friends. I'm not their friend. I'm right. friendly. Yes. I look. I'll look out if you ask me for something. I'll be like, oh, let me see what I can do. Let me connect you with this person. But I'm not. It's not you're not my friend. That's very different. Yeah, very different. Mm-hmm. Friends are people like to me. My f- real friends are people that I have dinner with, that mm-hmm. I break bread with, mm-hmm. that um, we get we get money together. We go on adventures together. Mm-hmm. They've been to my house. I've been to their house. Mm-hmm. That's if so they funny. pick me up from the airport uh-huh. or help me move, oh, we we are real friends. BFFs. Forever. I know. Mine is mine is a, one of my gauges for a friend is, do I trust you to tell you what I'm really not happy about in my life? And let me change my mind next week. And you still know I'm the same person. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Ooh, but then that list shrinks down. Doesn't it? Because <laughs> sometimes there's only a couple. Pe- if Bert made me really upset mm-hmm. about something that he did that was really not good. Mm-hmm. there's only a couple people I'd call and go, can I talk to you about this? Mm. And they know we're not broken. We're not breaking up. He's not a bad human. We're just having a moment. Those are my friends. Same with my kids. Hey, mm-hmm. I really screwed up this one parenting thing. That That's who I really think. I have friends too outside of that circle, but yeah. those real, real, real. The real, real, yeah. But it's funny how people be like, oh yeah, Tiffany Ash, that's my friend. That's my best friend. I'm like... <laughs> I don't know where you live. I feel that way that we are very <laughs> friendly. Yes. So we spent the summer together for a couple of weeks and we're very friendly. And I would never hesitate to call you and ask yeah. you something or Yeah, and I wouldn't hesitate to, to call here. you. Yet. And I wouldn't hesitate to call yeah. you and ask you for but something. I would never assume that we were friends. I just I just barely know you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. As yeah. as a respectful, I mean that super respectfully. Yeah. I would never say that's my friend. In that way. Right. Just that we're very friendly. We are very friendly. And I enjoy your company we, very much. We are a, a little more than associates. A I little more than associates. Yeah, because I, like I will that. ride out for you. If you say, Tiffany, I need help moving this thing, I'll be like, girl, I happen to be and in the neighborhood. And then we be friends. I'm coming in and now we <laughs> friends. All right. Like, you well, be surprised. Well, I'd move like, anything for you too, so <laughs> maybe we're on our way. Yeah, we on our way. Like, look, <laughs> if you need somebody to wash your hair, wash your ass, I will help you with that too. I, <laughs> I have washed many grown-ups' asses. That's Same. coming out of surgery, coming out whatever, and Same. I'm like. Change some diapers yeah. in the time of grown people. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Because yep. they, because I needed help, because they were there for me. Sure. And I didn't even, some of these people were there for me and I didn't even ask them to be there for me. They had no clue they were being there for me. Right. And so. Isn't that how interesting when you grow up and I did not, by any stretch of the imagination, grow up the way you did. Mm -hmm. um, In 1,000 different ways. But for my own life experience, I did have some rough times with my mom. Mm -hmm. I went to six different schools in 12 years. So shuffle back and forth between parents, live with grandparents. Mm-hmm. Nothing like you at all. But it's amazing when you have a little bit of trauma and then you grow up and you realize who those people you're talking about were and they weren't who you maybe thought they were when you were a child. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Woo, child. Right? They were actually heroes. They were. And what I... The reason I point that out is because I think you and I, as a person, are that Mm -hmm. for people you don't realize you are that for. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm learning that. You are. I'm learning that now. I'm like, uh, uh, all my good deeds are coming back. You are that. And I'm like, what? I did what? I helped you with what? You did what? I didn't know that. I was just being nice. You just being yourself. Yeah, I'm just being me. I'm just yeah. doing for you what I would want somebody to do for me. I didn't know that's what I had no idea. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's a, a life best lived. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I, I don't expect anything from anybody. Nothing. Just just treat me the way I treat you. That's very clear that mm-hmm. you are someone who does not expect anything from anybody. Yeah, because I don't want to be disappointed. As soon as I start expecting things. I'm the same way. I just had this <laughs> conversation yesterday about Burke Kreischer. So I was saying, honey... We are sometimes in a 90-10 relationship. Uh-huh. Can you guess who's the 90 <laughs> and who's the 10? And uh, part of that's my fault. Mm-hmm. Because if I expect more than 10, I'm definitely going to be disappointed. Right. So I'm good with my 10. I'll take my 10. Right. Happy in my 10, super safe there, and then never disappointed. But 
But that's not always, that's not balanced. No. And we got to do better. 100%. Do you do that too? I, I do it. I do it. I'm so horrible. I'm very horrible. I like, I don't expect nothing from nobody. Yeah, I don't much I just, either. Just, just whatever I give. And then they might not give it back to me, but I I know it's going to come from somewhere. Yeah. Right? That's how I feel like. I know it'll come yeah. from somewhere. Yeah. Then I'll help with, with this thing. Man, don't worry about it. Whatever. I don't expect them to turn around and help me. Now, I will get to a certain point of being so helpful that I will start calling off. Like, I'll start realizing, like, maybe after the 34th time, like, babe, this person is using me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I start to get mad. Then I get a little bitter. Then I, like, let's have a conversation. And then I start going over the list of all the things that I've done. Uh, especially if they asking me for something else. And I'll be like, well, hold up. Yeah. The things that you are asking me for did not move. The things that you asked me for in the past did not move my needle forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, between me and you or for my career or for anything. In my Whatever life. it is. Yeah. But I did it because I care for you and I want the best for you. Yeah. Now you ask me to do this thing. And um, it took a lot of energy and time to do those other things for you. Right. And I didn't ask for no, no, give me this or give me that. I didn't ask for none of that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't asked you for anything the whole time that I've known you, right? right. Uh, but this, what you're asking me for is a lot. And I don't know where in the hell you think you can just ask me for $100,000 and think I'll just give away $100,000 like that. Yeah. You have never even been in my house. Right. You've never even, like, you've never helped me. Yeah. You've never been there for me. You've never, if I, we're talking about, I posted your movie poster. Like, you and a whole bunch of other strangers I don't know <laughs> posted the movie right. poster. Like, but you're asking me for it. You don't even have a business plan. Right. And you think I just can just give it out? Like, no, it don't work like that. No. It don't work like that. Well, no. Now then I'm the evil mean bitch. You to this, you to that. I'd rather be the evil mean bitch sitting on my $100,000 that I'm going to pay taxes on anyways <laughs> or go do something for my actual family members or my actual friends yeah. that look out for me, mm -hmm. that protect me. Mm -hmm. Not pretend protect. Totally. Yeah. About that real connection, right? Mm -hmm. That's all that matters in life anyway, is your real connections with people. You can't take anything with you. Yeah. And I think that leaves with your soul. Mm -hmm. if, I can, if I called you, mm -hmm. if I called you and said, in two days, I'm cooking a dinner. I know you might be busy, but I really would like it if you came over. I'd be there if I at all possible. Like you came, I feel, I feel oh, like you yeah. would be like, I'm coming. Through. I would. There's some of my other people that think they... Ah, this is my girl. I do that. They be like, ah, ah, I don't know. Ah. Why? Cause Why? they weirdo. Cause they not. Cause they weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I met some of your friends at your prom, and they were awesome. A you lot sat of them, me at a table with people that have been friends with you for a long time. My real ones. The is people that, that have were? come to my house and caught me in uh, my deepest depression. It's like, well, we getting you up. Get up. Are we cleaning this? Are we on? They help me come clean my house. Yeah. I think that's a real friend, too. When you're Heck just, yeah. like, down in the dumps and they come over, just come, just randomly check on you. And they're like, your house is a mess. <laughs> Where's your housekeeper? I find the housekeeper. I don't want to look at nobody. <laughs> they're like, that's it. We cleaning up. And they just start cleaning your house for you. And then you feel bad. So you start cleaning with them. And <laughs> then the next thing you know, y'all drinking vodka and dancing and laughing. And feeling way better. And, and feeling, feeling way, way better. better. That's right. And I'm like, so I'll be telling my close ones, like, hey, if you want to have a cleaning party, let me know. I'll come over, clean your house. You can't clean. Like, and we'll do that every now and then for each other. Just clean up and then get rid of stuff we don't need and share with each other. Like, that's fun to me. I love that shit. Yeah, cleaning party. Totally. Mm -hmm. I love and then that you learn shit. new cleaning tricks, too. Like, oh, I didn't know that you could do that with Comet on a mirror. <laughs> what? You put Comet on a mirror? <laughs> yeah, well, my friend, she put Comet on a mirror, let it dry, and then no. wipe it down oh. with a newspaper and the mirror is like, then she put a little bit of shaving cream on there and it don't even fog up. What? Mm -hmm. I wiped the shaving cream down. Beautiful. Never heard of this before in my life. That's amazing. Me neither. Also, white vinegar. I learned that from my other friend. White vinegar is really good on the mirrors. Didn't know that either. How about that? Learning new stuff all the Learning time. Learning new stuff. And uh, here I am, Windex. <laughs> I know, <laughs> me too. Mm -hmm. Pine saw. Mm -hmm. Everything's pine saw. That's what you grow up that Look, way I feel too. like your house ain't clean if it don't smell like pine saw. I know, right? <laughs> it's fabuloso out here. Yeah, fabuloso. But in the South... It's pine, pine saw, saw, buddy. Look, I still use pine saw. I'll use a fabuloso that smells a little bit like pine saw. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it's cheaper. The fabuloso's cheap. 
It is cheap. Yeah, yeah. You get cheap. that at the 99 cent store Come for on, a very man. affordable cost. And then I think it shouldn't cost that much money to clean. <laughs> it should not. It should not. Sometimes I will buy, look, this is what grandma talking about, like when you want to disinfect stuff, or if you think you see a little mold or whatever, put some hydrogen peroxide on it. Really? And baking soda. Baking soda clean everything. Baking soda is like the yeah, clean off is. of everything. And it's a safe abrasive. So mm-hmm. you can scrub a little bit, but mm-hmm. not scratch anything up. It's yeah. the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love me some baking soda. I use that on everything. So I have to tell you something about you. Um, and I'm fully loaded. I think mm-hmm. I texted you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Wife of the Party is brought to you by DraftKings. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like Blackjack. I love Blackjack. Roulette and Slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play DraftKings Casino. Play online on your time and your space and within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable. So you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Sign up with promo code WOTP and new customers get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code WOTP. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Please play responsibly. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. You know, I had this thing at Just for Laughs I had to go to, and I was confiding you knew that I'm super insecure about anything red carpet or anything like that. And you told me what I should wear, how I should do my hair, what type of makeup I should be buying, and how to apply it in about one minute. You just went and da 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 da. I I so appreciated that for a lot of reasons. One was it gave me direction for what to look at because I felt lost. Mm-hmm. But the most important one was you made me feel really seen. Right? Well, I see you. No, I know, but but it was, I don't know, it was a little different. Well, I could feel what you was what you were explaining to me. I felt it. I know exactly what you were feeling, and I wish somebody would have told me these things. Right. The things that I was telling you, I wish somebody would have told me. Right. I wish somebody would have said, hey, it's going to be this type of event, so you want to probably do your hair like this. You want to probably wear this kind of makeup. It don't have to be super heavy, but you want it to be enough to pick up your eyes yeah, and your smile you said, yep. and everything. And you want to make sure your dress, you feel comfortable, but you feel beautiful. Like, yeah. whatever you're wearing, you can wear pants, you can wear this, but it needs to be like, you know, it's kind of like a businessy thing, but it, you can be very formal if you want to. Like I went in that red dress with the back, like ah, like I yeah. went like hello, darling. <laughs> when I went, um, but it's like whatever you feel comfortable. You want to feel as comfortable as possible and bring a pair, a spare pair of shoes. Yeah, because your feet gonna hurt. Yep. Well, I appreciate that moment with you very much because the next weekend I had a quick turnaround. I had to find something. And get all that stuff together really quick. And I went shopping with Georgia and Isla and said, here's what Tiffany said. Mm-hmm. This and this and this and this and this. You told me to focus on my boobs and my legs. Yeah, that's your strong point. But it's like boobs and legs. And though I bought this dress that was boobs. Mm-hmm. And Bert was like, would you just wear that dress every single day? See? <laughs> Please. I was like, it's from Tiffany's advice because I would have just been so lost. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I would have figured it out at some point, mm-hmm. but it just made my life so easy because I had direction and you said it with such confidence and you are so beautiful and stylish yourself. Thanks. So you. I just wanted to thank you. 
Thank you. Like sort of publicly for that one moment. It's the last day that you were on Fully Loaded. Mm -hmm. You told me that. Yeah. And I was like, what a great conversation. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And thank you for seeing me. And I heard. Really seeing me. Now I heard because one of our mutual associate friends was there. Tammy. Yes. That she used to work with. She was there and she was like, I was, she said, you should have seen her, Tiffany. She looks so Aww. gorgeous. She looks so beautiful. And I wanted to go over to her, but I was way in the back. I don't know why she did And I said, well, why? You should have called her. She was like, I don't really have her number like that. I don't think maybe I do. I don't know. I was like, well, you could have called me and I would have called her and said, hey, Tiffany's totally. in the back. You got to see how to tell me. And she was like, oh, I didn't want to be bothersome. And it was just, she was like, it was so beautiful, though. Aww. And she said that you looked so gorgeous Aww. and Bert was so happy and she was, was so happy for him. And, I like, didn't even know was, she was there. Yeah. She like Facebook messaged me, I think, this past week and told mm-hmm. me she was there. And I was like, Tammy Jo, you should have, I mean, I wish I'd known because even though I know a lot of people, everybody's there for work. And it was, I was just a date. I would have loved right. to have said hi and hung out and had a familiar face that was, right. you know, I'd love to catch up with her. So I got to call her and catch She up says that anyway. you were the best to party with. And I was like, oh, I agree. I was fun. I we agree. Fun. You had so much fun. We had so much fun. The skating party. Yeah. She showed me the pictures. I'm like, I wish I was, I was an invited. Wait, I didn't know y'all like that. Why yeah. didn't you, did you invite my grandma to this? She's like, we did not invite her to no. some of our things. No. Some things we would invite her. She would come to some stuff. But, she would to yeah. some stuff. But not mm, that one. No, nah. I don't think she want to go roller skating in nah, deep in like, the valley. No, nah, no. Nah, she wasn't nah. going to roller skate. She would have watched you, don't you? She would. She was a sweet, sweet And then sitting lady. there reading her Bible or something. <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you grow up in the church? Uh, she was a Jehovah Witness. So, oh, okay. So I would go to the Kingdom Hall with her. Yeah, we'd go to Kingdom Hall. And then when I got into foster care, um, we was going to, I went to all kind of different things, you know. Uh, we go to the Catholic Church. There's a lot of standing up and sitting down and that. And that's other, they gonna make sure you exercise. Right. Uh, I never understood their message, though. No, me I, I never understand them. Like, what's the word? Of it? I don't understand the message. No, I don't either. I don't understand why everybody's saying the same thing absolves you of sin there's no responsibility in that it's just it's just rote and give us your tithes yeah i don't understand that i was confused by that um yeah and then me telling my sister this man like i don't know i kind of subscribe to that i like the way the jehovah witnesses do it like we're gonna pray give it to god move forward do better right? just do better I don't know yeah, about that pray give it to god you know give it to god i like mm-hmm. now then, then i was going to the Baptist Church. Now, that's the concert. That is a good I time. Mean, I mean, I've never been to an African-American Baptist Church, but I, I have. Never, I've been to one white Baptist Church, and that was that felt like a concert, too, but it was on the borderline. Of right. The it, they, they, there's a lot of activity. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of screaming and sweating and mm-hmm. singing and stomping and up and down. And my great-grandmother and my great-great-grandmother were on the second pew every Sunday Wore a pillbox hat, leopard pillbox hat. One of them, my great great grandmother. She was five foot. Excuse me, she was five foot nothing. She was just <laughs> like a little short, squatty thing. And she stood up, and down, and said "Amen" mm. fifty, sixty times. But uh, yeah, I learned a lot in the Baptist church mm. that I draw from. Although there's a lot in the Baptist church I don't understand or agree with. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of that. Just be a good person and give it to God. Yeah. I don't like the that you were born. You were born of sin and you shall repent all days of your life. I don't, I don't buy that. I don't yeah, think God but does you that. Know, I, I do believe yeah. that we are born like our flesh. Like some of us, well, some of us, some babies are born and they're not perfect. Right. The flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. But the soul is strong. Mm-hmm. And I believe that we are all here to have experiences mm-hmm. and to do things, not just for yourself, but for others. Yeah. And for yourself is to learn. Like right. you need to be learning from these experiences and not afraid to share them. That's why I like writing the books, because I'm sharing these experiences. And my grandma used to say, like, the Bible means to, uh, but but life means to live in further enlightenment. Like mm-hmm. you want to constantly be learning and you want to Wait constantly a minute. enlighten others. Live in further enlightenment. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's life. what life means. Live in further enlightenment. So you want to be learning and you want to be making sure other people are learning. You want to enlighten others. You want to bring, when you come into a room or come into a space, it's not like, oh, this, man, man. like people should be like, oh, what am I going to learn today? What's going to happen today? Like, you know, should be some excitement there. 
Um, and it, it doesn't have to be everywhere you go, but you you want to bring something to the table, mm-hmm. right? So as I try to do it, and the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. So these are, these are basic instructions from way before there was all this technology that we have now. These are just people's experiences. Some of it might be real. Some of it might be fake. Who knows? But this is some basics that you can go by mm-hmm. in order to maneuver in your life. Yeah. So like, what would Rachel do? What would Sarah do? What would Jesus do? What would this person do? Yeah. And then, you know, I started doing these bar and bar mitzvahs. My grandma was telling me about how my dad was Jewish and all this stuff. And then I'm going to their, like, I'm going to the temple, to the synagogue, and I'm seeing a, their, their practices. And I'm like, yo, I like this. Yeah. And that my soul feels most comfortable there. I feel, I, and I just feel like wherever you're going to, like, praise and worship God or wherever you're going to, like, get your spiritual food, you should, you should feel comfortable mm-hmm. in that space. If you do not feel comfortable and I'm not talking about comfortable, like go to sleep, like comfortable, like, yeah, I want to hear what's going on. I want to learn today. Like it's my soul, just like my hair, like even thinking about it, like the hair on my arms is just kind of like getting prickly, gives goosebumps because I feel safe. Mm-hmm. Even though I might be surrounded by a bunch of people that don't look like me at all. Right. You feel at home. I feel like I'm le- like, like DNA memory, like how you were saying the butterflies know where yeah. to go. Either they were born there, they go here, they know to go where to go back to lay the eggs. Like yeah. they know exactly what plant genetically. I feel like genetically, like when I hear Hebrew, I just feel like, oh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. And I might not know exactly what the word is, but I know what the energy is. I know what I need to do. I know, right. okay, I know God. I know this. I know how to pray. Right. I can do all the prayers. I, I, I got about 15 down. It's, I think it's a few more. Uh-huh. Got 15 of them down. And, and when I pray, like everything from the tour is like musical. And maybe I'm supposed to be a musician. Oh, that's the other thing I've been working on. I've been working on a lot of music. Have you? Yeah, I'm about to drop a music video in a few weeks. You are? I got to show you the video that's before exciting. I leave. You got to see it. Like, ah! But, like, I go there and it, the singing, the cantors, the prayers, the everything, like, it's even when they're reading the Torah, it's in a musical f- fashion. And my soul feels good. I feel full. My heart be feeling good. I be in there trying not to cry. That's amazing. And they might just be, you know, just doing a prayer. But I be, I don't know, my whole soul be like, oh, thank you for this food. Like, that's amazing. It's edification at its finest. That's so great. Spiritual food, I call it. Spiritual food. You get it from your bees. I get it from my bees. I get it from the grass. I get it from the synagogue, the temple service. I get it from, when I pray. I love to pray. I don't know. I just love it. I don't know. Make us all the prayers are in music. And sometimes I just I pray in English. You do. I like I like to pray in Hebrew too. I feel like God's like, I see you over there learning. <laughs> I see you. I see you, boo. I see like, you. Get I be it, trying girl. to pray in Japanese too. It's not the same. Japanese. Yeah, you it's speak not the Japanese? same. Hey, Nihonga ni maska. I want to be by the time I'm like I would like by the time I'm fifty to be able to speak four languages fluently. And what do you speak now? English. Any bonics fluent, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I can sing you a song in Spanish. I could talk. I understand a lot of Spanish. I'm hotic. That's my father's native tongue from um, what Eritrea. Is it? I'm hotic. I'm hotic. I'm hotic, and that I could speak very little of, but I understand a lot of it. And where is that spoken? In Eritrea. Where is that? Next to Ethiopia. Okay. Yes, just past the never-ending storyland. No, uh-huh. I'm just like <laughs> Right? I was like, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, it's in East Africa, just uh, off the Horn of Africa in, on the east side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's where my dad is from. Okay. So, uh, yep, yeah, learned that. And then Japanese, I got, I'm like at a third grade, like third grade level with the Japanese. and But I can't read it very well. Good work on. Got to work on that. Yeah. And in Hebrew, I can pray in Hebrew, and I understand a lot of things. But I'm still, you know, I'm like a kid, and I like that feeling. Stay that way forever. Yeah, I like that feeling. Like constantly, like I want to learn more. I want to know more. I want to be able to communicate more. Yeah, stay that way forever. Yeah. Curiosity is the key to happiness. I think if you're always. Yeah, but there's some people say curiosity killed the cat. No. 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 And I feel like. Extreme curiosity and well, not no. paying attention to your surroundings. No, no, no. That term was used to control children. Mm. You know, don't do that. Curiosity killed the cat. 
Yeah. Don't be too curious because then you're going to get outside of what I have set up for your boundaries. Oh. I don't subscribe to that at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. Curiosity is freedom. It's it's art. It's expression. It's spirituality. It's happiness. Curio- it all comes from curiosity. Right. If you're not curious, you're not learning anything. Right. We That's wouldn't have great. microphones like this you wouldn't if have there was anything. no such thing as curiosity. You wouldn't have anything if people like, weren't curious. Somebody was curious. Like, how can we get someone to talk into a device and record that and replay it over and over? Over and over again. Hmm. How do we do that? Hmm. I'm not sure. Let me figure sure. it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my curiosity and create something. Seriously. What are you doing the rest of your day? <laughs> What's your day? Seriously, what are you doing today? <laughs> the rest What's of today? today? Yeah. Oh, um, the rest of today. After this, I'm going to find some food. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to meet up with my sister and nice. we're going to hang out. That'd be fun. Yeah. Does she out. live close to you? Hey, she's not far. She's like, uh, I guess on the navigation system, you know, it's like seven miles, 10 miles. West LA, South Central LA is not that far. But and we're going to hang out. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe later on in the evening, I'll see my little man friend. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Mm-hmm. I get to go to back to school night and meet all the Iowa's teachers. Doesn't that sound riveting? Oh, wow. That's going to be. My little dyslexic child. <laughs> where every teacher's like, interesting child, interesting young lady, interesting. How bad is her dyslexia? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I just got to get her through high school, man. Once I get her out of high school, she's going to be fine. Yeah, she'll be fine. You know, they got all kind of stuff for the dyslexia to teach you, like, certain things. uh, Because most of the time it's, like, visual or, like, audio, you know, certain ways to learn. She has something uh, called—she has a a sensory processing problem. So Mm -hmm. she has a processing problem in her brain that is not limited to reading. Mm. So all of her senses are really heightened. Mm-hmm. So she sees things differently. She hears things differently. She smells things differently. Like when she was in kindergarten, it would take us about 40 minutes to get shoes on her feet because wow. they feel so yeah. any kind of shoe. Doesn't matter like what kind. She lived for two years in the same pair of cowboy boots because that was the only shoes that she could tolerate. So this and were they is made all of leather? Crossing. They were. All natural? Yep. And that's what that was. And the, sh- the bottom part was probably wood or some kind like, of a uh, natural. It uh, probably was no it plastic. It was leather, but thick, it was thick, leather. thick. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was probably no plastic no on there whatsoever. Plastic. Now, she's yeah. okay with that plastic now, but as a kid, yeah, she just processes the world very differently. And I think it's a gift, but it's really hard for teachers who just want to teach this way yeah. to see it as a gift. Yeah. They see it as a problem. That mm-hmm. they got to deal with to get because her they don't know how to teach exactly. They don't know. And I'm how. go. All you got to do is let her listen. Don't mm-hmm. make her take notes. Don't give her grades based on her note taking. Ask her about what you just talked to her about. Ask her two weeks later. She'll remember everything you said. Exactly. Mm-hmm. She can ask she's her to like read me. it or write it down, and she's getting a bad grade. Yeah, forget about it. So tonight I got to go to every teacher and go. So you understand. Yeah. My daughter's dyslexic, and here's what that looks like for her. So, if you could give her oral tests, that'd be amazing. But like, think about it. Like, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, she'd have been in special ed, straight up. Uh, and, 100%. And, or they would have been like, oh, she's this, they'd have just skipped her, whatever, and just sent her out into the world, and she wouldn't know, because they didn't diagnose it. Well, what's interesting about L.A. Mm-hmm. or California is they didn't recognize dyslexia as a learning disability until about until Isla was in seventh grade. Wow. California, the state of Georgia tests and recognizes kids by third grade and then separates them for six months, remediates them, and then they're ready to go back into school. Mm-hmm. California didn't even recognize it until about until I was in about seventh grade. Because they couldn't afford to recognize They couldn't it. afford to remediate it. And mm-hmm. so they still don't have people trained for it. So when she was transitioning from fifth grade to sixth grade, which is middle school, her special ed teacher, because she got pulled out and into special ed throughout the day, was like, I think she needs to go to special school. And I went, nope. My kid's not going mm-hmm. to a special school. She's mm-hmm. going to regular school because she is, all her best friends are in the highly gifted program. Mm-hmm. She's really smart. Mm-hmm. She just doesn't take in information like everybody else. Right. So I just need a teacher 
to give her the information the way she needs to get it. Right. And I've just been a freaking bulldog where I'd, every year I go, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Every book on an audio book, any test that you can give her orally, do it. If she can do a project instead of a paper, bring it on. You, I, I mean, anything that I can do to get her to learn what you need her to know. It just not through reading the damn book. Right. Come on. Right. The the book don't be working for me neither. But now I read But books. you're reading but you're writing books. Yeah, I'm writing books. I mean, I'm reading books. I got it what's so funny to me is I could not read until I was like sixteen years old, fifteen years old, my drama teacher figured out like there was some problem here. Yeah. And she worked with me like every day doing lunch and nutrition. And then cut to, you know, thirty years later, I drop a book, an audio book, and I get nominated for a Grammy for it. Amazing. Like that is huge. Cause I would not read out loud in, in class. I would not, you know, if I did, I was reciting what somebody else I got somebody else to read it to me. I memorize everything they say it and I would recite that. Yep. I you know, I like I sang. Yeah, that's what I'm like. That's why I like her so much too. I'm like, I know this. I know this bird. Right? This bird. This bird is like me. She like, is, and she's gonna be able to do awesome, amazing things. Yeah. She just gotta learn how to like. It's very like it's still hard for me to read. Sometimes I'll see a word, and be like, I know that word. I'll be like, which, but it's not which. It's watch, <laughs> or it's with, right, or something else. But I just go off the shape of it. That's what she does. Same. And thing. I just call out what the shape is. I don't even look at each letter. I just see the shape, and that's what it is. She guesses. Yeah. She guesses more than reads. Yep. Same, same here. Same well, here. Well, then good. Then maybe someday I'll be talking to her about what a powerhouse she is. Oh, you definitely will be talking to her about being a powerhouse. And her bees and her monarch butterflies and all her books and all her <laughs> acting. She's an amazing actress. Yes. I wish she would actually pursue it in some ways, even though acting is such a hard career. She's really great at it. She just doesn't have any interest in it. Fine. Well, not, maybe not right now, but as she gets later. older, she might she might have an interest in it later. She's pretty great. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and talking to me. Thank you. It's great to see you. Good to see you. It too. really was great to see you. It's super great to yeah, see you. Yeah, I missed you. I missed you too. So, um, and you might get that call to come over. Well, anytime. And we may call you. Know, it's come Beyonce over too. weekend this weekend. So it's Beyonce weekend. What's yeah, that? Yeah, Beyonce's in town performing. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah she's performing. So you know I'm trying to go to every single show. That's amazing. And LL Cool J is performing on Sunday. What? There is a show out here with LL Cool J on Sunday. So I'm trying to get to that. I'm trying to do Beyonce, Beyonce, LL Cool J, then rest. Okay. I was just talking about LL yesterday. LL Cool J yesterday. I was like, he is, I remember seeing him for the first time in high school and being like, who the hell is that guy? He mm-hmm. is H-O double T hot. Mm-hmm. He's so hot. I would love to see LL. We are moving our daughter to college this weekend. <sighs> so I will be missing Beyonce and LL. You going to be crying? Nah, she's her sophomore year. So it's better. Okay, okay, okay. But it's better. I'll probably be crying anyway, but it's not as bad <laughs> as last year. I was good last year. I was actually really good until Mother's Day. I was totally fine. Went through the whole fall, went through Christmas. I was like, actually, this is not as bad as I thought. I talked to her enough, FaceTime her enough. It's not so bad. Mother's Day started coming and I started going, oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> like, she's the reason I'm a mother. Like, she made me mother on Mother's Day. What am I going to do on Mother's Day? Bert's out of town. It's just me and Isla. Isla would show up with, like, some mold covered strawberries and go happy mother's day i would make georgia would make me like winston churchill's breakfast in bed i'm just gonna get nothing this is gonna be terrible and then bert flew her home for mother's day oh. and i had no idea and she walked through the door and i fell completely apart like just fell totally apart so i did good from september to may uh-huh and then it hit you. And then it hit me like, this is it. This is my first Mother's Day without her. And oh. I, I can't, I didn't want to do it. I was thinking about flying to her for my Mother's Day. <laughs> Be like, move over, keg party. Here comes mom. Mama needs show Mother's you Day. Party. Right? Right? <laughs> Give me that keg. It's Mother's Day. It's my yeah. Mother's Day. But yeah, she walked in and surprised me. She's the sweetest girl. She, she, is. she is. You, you guys you. did such a good job with both your girls. Thank you. They're so smart. So compassionate. Also, uh, they don't take no shit. 
which I like. They're pretty good about that. They're pretty good at seeing all these. I mean, they spent the summer with a bunch of famous people, Mm -hmm. but they don't really see anybody as famous people. No, they see them as people. As people. And they move as such. And and they treat people with respect and dignity, and they expect it. I mean, I just, I'm so proud of them. Oh, thank you. I'm very proud of them because they are going to be great like in the, when they go out into the world, into the world, they're gonna do great things. I hope so. I think so, and I hope so. I know so. Well, thank. Not you. Not that I'm psychic or anything, but I have been working on my third eye. <laughs> have you? Yeah, I have. I have. You have. It's part of sitting with the bees. Is it really? That's what you're doing. Is working yeah, I'm with meditating. Third eye? I'm like talking to them and kind of meditating and asking them to make the honey super good. So. When I eat it, it can clean out all the calcium and deposits and stuff in my brain so that I can do great things and see people for who they really are. Yeah. And I be seeing people. Yeah. And I wish I was doing that, like, you know, back in t- years ago. Yeah. Okay, years ago. But I needed to go through all the things I went through so that I could get to here. That's the way life works. Mm-hmm. Got to go through it to get here. And all yeah. you got is one word, and that's today. Today. That's it. Just yeah. stay in today. Are you happy today? Yep. Yeah, I'm happy today. You know, I don't know why your accent that you just hit with in this, what you just said made me wish I had some lemonade and we were sitting on the porch. <laughs> I just get real southern all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, sorry. Oh, she has some lemonade. It pops out on me sometimes. I, I love it. Uh, unexpectedly. Like Somebody last night said, whoa, that was really southern. And I was like, I don't know. I don't <laughs> think I sound southern. You do. But as I talked to my daddy, lady. Uh-huh. <laughs> then you'd hear some Southern because yeah, everybody knows my daddy goes, what do you say? Wait, what do you say? Who do you, what is he saying? And he talks real Southern. Really? He like going over there and we get to look at them. Yeah, like that. Going, yes. What, 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 yeah, what? That's like, right. What? He and his brother came out and they're all, they're like, they're real close in age. They look very similar and they talk exactly the same. So they were working on my house and they'd asked Bert to help him to help them. And they're talking to each other. I don't know about that. Did you measure that? I didn't measure that. You know what I'm saying? If we put that up, we're going to shim that. And I don't know about that. And Bert turns around and he goes, I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> How am I supposed to help them? They like share a brain. I'm going in the house. <laughs> Just tell me when I can come back out and tell me what to do, Leanne. I can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> do it every time. I took my uncle's favorite restaurant is Lowry's. Yeah. Where I work, yes. you know, with your grandmother. Uh-huh. And I took him last time he was here. He was here in May. Uh-huh. Take him every time. He loves that place so much. This time I said, let's get dessert. And he says, you know, my favorite dessert is that hot foot Sunday. I said, <laughs> okay, we get the hot foot Sunday. <laughs> He's super stoic. He never uh, emotes anything. He hardly ever talks. My dad's really friendly, but his brother's really kind of uh, not shy, but quiet. Uh-huh. He, he only talks when he has something to say. Right. He's not a chatter. Mm-hmm. And this big ice cream sundae comes out, and he goes, wow. And I was like, that's my favorite moment. I think that's, I'm on on my deathbed. Remember my uncle. See, he's 76 years old. Seeing this ice cream sundae come out and just go, wow. (laughs) He ate that whole thing by himself. That ice cream sundae, like four people should eat that thing. It was one of my favorite moments ever in my whole life. I love it. So the little boy came out of him. He was so excited. I love that man. I've always loved him, but that's probably my favorite moment of all time. Oh, I love it. Just ice cream sundae. So simple things. Right. It is the little things, it's, ain't it? It's the little things. Well, let's make sure we enjoy all those little things. I agree. Yeah. So till next time, I love you to pieces. I love you to pieces. I'm too. so glad I got to know you this summer better. Yeah, me too. I really me am. Too. I'm really glad. Yeah, me too. Uh, thanks uh, for coming and talking to me here. Yeah. Enjoy your sister and maybe your man. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> he not my man, man. We working on it. Uh, I guess maybe you're maybe man. You sort of man, kind of man. Kind of sort of. I don't know. Working on a man. Working on a man. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs>